Chris the Carpenter here, RocketBrainStudios.com, with a new product. Um, okay, there's a couple videos that I, I did uh, when I first got this guy in, um, and I was just sort of playing with it a little bit. But now uh, I wanted to do like a little bit, a slightly more official video, and uh, give you guys my ringing endorsement of the new uh, Daegu um, Micro Magic Magician, Micro Magician. Okay, so here's the rundown. This is, uh, it's a little bitty board, 30 millimeters by 60 millimeters, not centimeters. Uh, it's got an Atmega 168, speaking Arduino, so it's, it's just an Arduino board. Okay, but it basically has every single bell and whistle you could ever imagine, and all of those bells and whistles have been made easy for you. So let's break it down. Um, this is a 3.3 volt device with an onboard voltage regulator. Now, the fact that it's 3.3 makes it pretty nice because you can get by with uh, three AA's alkaline or four AA's um, rechargeable. So you don't have to have, you know, big gargantuan battery packs um, to run this guy, which is pretty awesome. Um, it has a switch, which seems kind of silly, but I adore having a switch. I mean, it's just really nice. Um, you get your USB on board, um, which is just awesome. Then you've got a motor driver on board, and it's that little teeny, teeny little guy right there, but it is quite possibly one of the sweetest motor drivers I've ever dealt with. It's, um, it's about an amp, okay? Um, per the specs, you have 800 milliamps, and you can run 800 milliamps all day long, all right? Um, but even better, it has a stall limit. It has a stall warning at just over 900 milliamps, 910, I think, to be exact. And basically what that means is when your robot um, runs into the wall and the wheels stop turning, or when it uh, gets the carpet fuzzies all wrapped around the axle of the uh, motor and the motor starts working really, really hard, um, it's going to start sucking more power. Well, this has built-in stall flags. Um, they're broken out as two pins, and basically <clears throat> you're gonna have a change of state on that pin when you hit that stall. And uh, you can run that into the, your interrupts or regular I.O. pins or however you wanna deal with that. Um, so you know for a fact your motors have stalled or that you're just running them way, way, way too hard. So that's really, really awesome. It's a great uh, safety feature. Um, it also has uh, the ability to put the motor driver to what's called the sleep mode, um, which is great. Uh, you can basically, in essence, turn it off, um, whether 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 or not you use it, um, or if you let's say let's say you don't want to use it at all and you just want to get those four pins back, you can do that. You can just shut the darn thing off and get those pins back, which is awesome. Okay, um, you have an accelerometer. There's a built-in three-axis accelerometer on here, which not only is good for this kind of stuff, which is great if you have a robot that people are going to play with and pick up. You want to know if the robot has been picked up. You got that covered. Um, if you have a robot that's going to go over funky terrain and you want to know if it's fallen over, it's covered. Uh, if you're like doing like caterpillar robots or you know anything that actually might fall over and you want it to right itself, a built-in accelerometer, which is just awesome. I've been playing with it and it's fantastic. Uh, continuing, infrared, 38 uh, kilohertz infrared sensor right there. It's a standard comp uh, 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 television remote control infrared receiver. And it uses um, Sony protocol. Sony protocol is like the most standard transmitter protocol e ever. And any universal remote, you go to the dollar store and you get like a, a universal remote because you lost your remote for your TV, chances are it's probably going to be using the Sony protocol right out of the box. And if not, it could be programmed to do so. Uh, so you have, you can use infrared and that gives you 127 different codes that you can, that you can send to this. Um, which is awesome. Also, there is a, um, there's an indicator LED on the sensor, so as soon as the sensor gets something, you get a blink out of the LED, so um, it's just great for debugging. 
Now, all of the IOs, oh, and you have ISP, if you're an ISP person, you have ISP to the uh, Arduino. Um, all of the pins, um, all of the IOs, everything is broken out to um, male and female headers with almost all of them broken out to three pin, you know, powered, ground power signal headers as well. So male, female, uh, jumper wires, anything you got, you can plug it in. It's like, it's just no problem. Uh, also, for your main bank of IOs here, you have the ability to switch between the 3.3 volt supply on the, you know, on board, and uh, and or the external supply, um, which uh, again, great for servos or whatever else. I think you run eight eight servos with no modification whatsoever. You just plug them in, you know, right? Um, and I think that's it for the features. Now, the probably the coolest thing about everything, and the, probably the coolest thing about all of the bells and whistles on this board, is the fact that this board has its own library, and it comes with its own library. A library uh, works with the older Arduino, and then um, I just actually just recently got a copy of the new 1.0 uh, Arduino library. And what that library does is it, it hides the, the sausage factory. Um, all of the complicated stuff, all of the stuff that's going to confuse you is hidden away, tucked away in the library, and you never, ever, 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 ever have to deal with it. When you want to make your motors go, there's no high, low pins, pinouts, what's connected to what, PWM, I don't get any of that. You don't need to. Um, all you need is one single command, uh, micro m dot motors, and then in the parentheses you've got four variables. The two the two first variables are the speed of the left motor, the speed of the right motor, and the next two variables are if you want to use the brakes or not. This actually has braking included with the motor driver, which is awesome. If you're going to be doing uh, mapping or encoder stuff and you want your robot to you know drive a certain amount on your encoders and then stop and stop, 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 you got brakes. Brakes are awesome. Okay. And all that is covered by one single command within the library. Just type in a number, positive or negative, and the motor goes that fast, forward or reverse. It's so unbelievably simple. Same with the infrared. Uh, you've got basically one command that says, check the infrared. If you get something, let me know what it is. And that's it. Um, if you have an infrared command come in, the library just deals with it, takes care of it, and it spits out a, a single clean one number variable uh, that you get to use with your code. And that number will be between 1 and I think 127, uh, corresponding to whatever button you've hit on the remote. So it's as easy within your code as, did I get something? If I did, what is it? Okay, and then beyond that, it'd be like a select case, you know. If I got a one, go forward. If I got a two, go right. You know, um, incredibly simple. Same with the accelerometer. The accelerometer uh, for both tilt and, and impact, especially impact, um, all covered by the library. The library does all of the work for you. Um, you can set the sensitivity. So, you know, in terms of how hard you got to whack this thing before it registers an impact. You actually have two levels of oomph. You've got a one point something G and you've got a six G setting. So you've got a gentle tap setting and a whack the crap out of it setting um, for the impact. Not, o not only that, but there's also a, um, a resonance calculation figured in as well. So um, if your robot is driving over bumpy terrain, you can set the sensitivity to ignore that. If the robot impacts something and the chassis is actually resonating or vibrating, um, you don't want a, you don't want it to, to trigger, 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 trigger. You just want that initial impact to trigger. That's in here. That's already taken care of for you. So it's just incredibly, incredibly, incredibly simple. So um, I think. I think that's it. This video has got to be probably seven or eight minutes long by now, maybe ten. Um, so it's just wonderful. It's just a fantastic board. 
Uh, it just has absolutely anything and everything you could ever want to use on a board, uh, especially for small robots. GM9 motors, small geared motors, it just, it, this thing just eats them alive. It's just absolutely perfect. So, um, and again, I cannot stress enough, the library makes your life a dream. It, it just, you, you just don't have to deal with any difficult code. It's almost like, it's almost like doing it, it's almost like flowchart programming because all of the hard stuff has been taken care of for you. Um, and everything is broken down to simple, clear commands that look like English and, and they seem like they are what they are described to be. I mean, it's, it's a very, very clean, straightforward uh, nomenclature on the command. So it's, it's just an incredible, incredible, incredible system. So, um, so once again, uh, Micro Magician uh, from our friends at Daegu, now being carried by Rocket Brand Studios. And uh, I just cannot say enough about this board. This is my new main board. And, um, and this will, uh, the option for this to be included on all of my robots is coming very, very, very soon. Um, so, Micromagician, rocketbrandstudios.com. Buy one today. <laughs>